of the Family Arena in St. Charles, Missouri. It'll be the Quincy Hawks and Missouri Panthers, and you got all the action in the GLBC Sports Network where champions are crowned. Passion. It's what drives us. Drives us to do the impossible. None of you would be here today if not for your passion. Because you have gone through all the hours of pain it takes to get here. All the hours spent in the classroom. All the 6 a.m. workouts and afternoons spent putting your bodies through hell and back. You're here today because you've worked hard. Your moment of greatness is set right in front of you. But today, it isn't about being a scoring role as well. And not really. I mean, Joseph Tagarelli is someone about also to look at. Legacy. He's got just, just under 17 points. It's about what you choose uh, to leave behind. Junior Ford, he's shooting above 50% from the we field. Will you be content with be a box of participation going down low where he likes to Are you prepared low. to sacrifice uh, this team, from They've got four players in double figures this year. everything you've got, uh, so your name will be remembered. That can present a lot of problems, especially That's what it all comes down to. They rely heavily on just a couple players. There's no guarantee it tomorrow. Quincy has multiple players in the attack. There's only today. Quincy over to our last six. For some of you, four and two, they this is the end of the game. This will be the last time you take the they starting blocks. Or the field. Or the line. Or the court. Over the last couple of so, but they seem to be playing some of their better basketball right now. Are you prepared right? to yeah, fight for the pain? This, this is the time Sweet. of year you want to hit your, your high streak. Going to you want to get this going and get that momentum rolling. Or the bang. Certainly Quincy's been able to do that. Will you walk uh, away with a trophy? Or a medal? Or your name on a list of records. Two very close games to Are you two prepared to give it your all? Next game after this. Uh, certainly nothing to be mad about with Your those passion two losses. inspired you to begin victories, something new. One point losses are going to happen to any team. And now you'll get to decide how you'll end the right time. These two teams met earlier as a compassionate victor game, or as a respectful runner-up. Oh, absolutely. After just under 20 ports per game, he was the uh, GLVC tournament MVP last year. He led them to the championship. And, I mean, you can't say enough about Cameron Bundy. He is a special player that can create on his own, get off the dribble, doesn't matter how it is. But he will certainly pour the ball back in tonight. Should be a good one. 2-7. It'll be 2-7 matchup between the Jury Panthers and the Quincy Hawks. He got all the action at a 2016 GLBC Men's Basketball Championships here on the GLBC Sports Network where champions are crowned.
Back inside the family arena here in St. Charles, Missouri. It's game three of four here in the quarterfinals. Myself, Jordan Fisher, here this evening for game three of four. Reed Benzinger will be our sideline reporter. Reed, a business major at Quincy. So he'll cover the sidelines for, here, for us here tonight. Jordan, give us the starting lineups first for the Quincy Hawks. Yeah, we'll start with the Quincy Hawks. And they'll look like this. Hermson or the second, the 5'11 junior guard, who we talked about in pregame, averaging 11.5 points per game. He'll start at the point guard spot, making his 19th start on the year. Joseph Tagarelli, the 6'5 junior forward from Bayside, Wisconsin, averaging 16.5 points per game and 6.5 rebounds per game, making his 28th start in 29 games. Also, Gonson Inagwe, the 6'6 senior forward from Chicago, Illinois, averaging 10 points per game. He'll get the start, his 25th on the year. Vaughn Washington, the third. We'll get his start the 29th in as many games. The 6'1 redshirt junior from Kalamazoo, Michigan, is he's averaging 10 points per game as well. And then Evan, McCa Evan McCaughey, the 6'8 junior redshirt junior from Carthage, Illinois, will get the start. He's averaging 13.8 points per game, making his 29th start on the year. And the Quincy Hawks are coached by Marty Bell, who's in his 13th season. As for the Drury University Panthers, they're the two seed, and they're 19-7 on the year. Cameron Bundy, the 6'2 senior guard from Nixon, Missouri, will start. At point guard, the 19, he's averaging 19.9 points per game, shooting 46% from the field. Tevin Foster, the six-foot sophomore guard from Walton, Oklahoma, will get the start as well in the backcourt, averaging 14 points per game. Luciano Gomez, the 6'3 senior guard from Lancaster, California, will get the start in the backcourt along Foster and Bundy. In the frontcourt, Joshua Palmer, the 6'7 junior forward from Tosa, Oklahoma, averaging 10.5 points per game on the year, shooting 55% from the field. And then finally, Drew Moore, the 6'7 sophomore forward from right here in St. Charles, Missouri, averaging just under 8 points per game and just over 5 rebounds per game. Drury is coached by head coach Steve Hessers in his 12th season at Drury. Both of these teams like to score points. Quincy on the season averages almost 87 points per game. They give up 78, like you mentioned earlier in the pregame. They don't, defensively, they're not a sound team. But when you're going against Cameron Bundy, you have to do something a little different tonight because he's going to be explosive for this Drury Panther team. He'll dribble, drive, penetrate. He'll pull up. He'll shoot. He'll find open players on the floor. So defensively, Quincy will have to do something to, to solve that problem. Yeah, absolutely. I think you have to try to eliminate Cameron Bundy from the game plan, whether that's double team every time he drives or just try to prevent him from getting touches as it is. It's going to be difficult because it's no easy task. There's a reason why he averages almost 20 points per game. But as you kind of touched on, this Quincy team can score, but so can Jury. They shoot 49% from the field and 41% behind the arc, so they can play both inside and outside. Uh, certainly should be a good matchup, and we've seen a couple good matchups already here today in our first two games. Hopefully looking forward to a third great game today. Tickets been punched in our earlier games today. The number one seed, Bellarmine, will take on Lewis on Saturday evening, 6 p.m. Central Time. This is game one of two on our night session. It's the 2-7 seed. Drury will take on Quincy. Let's send, let's send it over to Reed Benzinger, who's over in front of the behind the Drury bench. Hey, my name is Reed Benzinger, and I'll be working the sideline for tonight's uh, Drury Quincy game. I'll be giving you updates for anything from the sideline that you guys need to know. Back to you guys. Thank you, Reed. Reed in his first, he's he's only been doing the. Uh, radio TV stuff now at Quincy for a little over a month and you guys I you guys have done a really fantastic job over the two days that you've been here and we really appreciate you stepping in and filling in here this evening well thank you I think it's certainly a great opportunity and certainly enjoyed it as here last year didn't get to be on air but certainly getting up this year so certainly a great experience for sure Anagwe picks up the first foul of the game it's gonna be the first foul of the game Drew Moore is gonna go to the foul line Drew Moore on the season Really, his game is kind of evolving as the seasons progress. Just 60% from the stripe, he makes the first of two. Uh, Drew Moore going to have to knock down his free throws here to get this good start for Jury, but ob obviously a little bit of a concern here. Quincy already picking up a foul just 16 seconds into this game. Moore makes one of two local product out of St. Charles, Missouri. Sinor brings the ball up court. Over to Anagwe. Near side now, Washington. Out top, it's McGahey. Baseline, Tagarelli. Shot is short. It's going to be rebounded down by Gamets. That's a good look by Tagarelli, though. I think the Quincy Hawks will take that pretty well all night if you can keep getting that look. Out top, it's Foster. Foster dribble drive, kicks. Baseline jumper. It's going to be off the iron. No good. Taken by Palmer. 
Quincy brings it back the other way. Sonor kicks. Shot up off the glass is good by Evan McCauley. That's a really good look there from McCauley. Did a good job running the floor of the 6'8 junior forward as he was able to get there. And a whistle and a foul underneath the basket. It's going to be an offensive foul. Foul's going to be on Drew Moore, his first, team's first. And this team, this jury team, not incredibly deep. Only 11 players on the roster, so staying out of foul trouble is going to be key for the Panthers if they want to try to get a victory here tonight. Sonor brings the ball up over midcourt. Gets it over to Washington. Down on the baseline, there's going to be a blocking foul, and they're going to call a moving screen on Quincy. That foul's going to be on Herm Sonor, the second. His first foul, team second. That's his first, the team second. Bundy will bring the ball up court for the Panthers. Right side, they go to Gomez. Back out top, they will swing it around. It'll be Foster. Bundy on the baseline, brings it back out to the elbow, extended right side. Dribble drive, penetration, look for the kick. They bring it over to Palmer. Down low to Gomez, and he lays it up and in. Good work down there as he was, Gomez able to get into the lane for the easy look as Quincy just about turns it over there. Washington's three from the left side is going to be no good. Rebounded down by Drew Moore. Foster pushes left side. Foster drives the lane, kicks the Bundy. Gomez in the corner. Gomez drives baseline, finds Drew Moore. His shot's going to be up off the iron, no good. And there'll be a whistle and a foul. See who they get here, but that's a little bit of a touch foul there. Fouls on number 31, Joshua Palmer. Joshua Palmer picks up the foul that's going to be his first, team second. We've played barely two minutes and we've had four fouls. Yeah, I mean, going back and forth, there's a little bit of physicality here. We'll see if that lightens up anymore, if it's going to be a lot of fouls tonight. Good skip pass. It'll be stripped from behind by Tevin Foster out of Lawton, Oklahoma. Palmer, out top now it's Foster. Foster between the legs covered by Washington. Palmer gets away with a travel, shot up, rolls around and it drops Joshua for the Panthers. Palmer. You're right there, he got away with the travel but able to get the shot up and in for his first two points of the night. Sonora out top, Washington. Still swinging around, Inagwe, three off the iron, no good. Coming down with the rebound is Tevin Foster. Foster finds Bundy right side. Bundy drives, jumper from 12, no good. Rebounded down by Drew Moore. Back out to Bundy for three, that's gonna be short. It'll be rebounded down by Hearn Senor. Quincy got lucky there, can't leave Cameron Bundy that wide open for a shot. Good pass by Senor. It's gonna be an offensive foul on Joseph Tagarelli. And that's a huge call there. Very good play there as he slid over, took the contact. Tagarelli picking up his first personal after getting a good look at the bucket. Good flow to the game early on. You want to see both teams getting into it, getting some shots, breaking a sweat early. You get a 30-minute warm-up here. It's a little chilly inside here tonight. Yeah, absolutely. I think both teams really doing a good job taking care of the basketball here early on. Just a little bit of fouls both ways, but I think they'll calm down once they get settled into the game. Out top now, it's Foster. Bundy with a three. Off the front of the iron, no good. Rebounded down by McCoy. Ball forced down low. There's going to be a pushing foul underneath on a dive, and it's, if it's a foul on Drew Moore, that'll be his second. I believe that's who they're gonna get for it, and that's just an unfortunate play for Drew Moore, trying to get on the floor and just happen to bump him out of bounds, as that is his second personal. So we'll see what head coach Steve Hester does here with Steve Hester not happy with forward. the ball. And rightfully so, I think that's just one of those, it's a bang, bang play, trying to hustle on the floor. Just an unfortunate call, but it looks like Moore's gonna stay in the game for right now. Nagwe, baseline. Back out top to Inagwe once again. Drives baseline between the legs, dribble, shot up in the air, it's gonna be off the iron, no good. McGaw, gets the rebound. Sonora out top. Washington, 15 on a shot clock. Baseline, the ball goes out of bounds. They'll say it goes off McGaw and it'll be 
Drury basketball. 5-2 is your score. We played just over four minutes. You got all the action in the 2016 GLV. My dad is an architect who taught himself English, earned his PhD, and helped lay the foundation for our journey. We moved from California to England to Egypt to Bahrain and then to Qatar. I am an Egyptian and an American citizen. I speak Arabic, French, and Spanish. And here I am in Missouri, surrounded by teammates from five countries. My goal in life, work at the United Nations to help build a better world. I'm Hadil Ali, and the GLVC is me. Fifteen fifty-six to go in the first half. It's Drury with a 5-2 lead. Early on, numbers aren't good, and Jordan and I were talking during the break about shooting percentages and depth perception behind the basket. Yeah, absolutely. When you play in an arena like this where it's so open, it can throw off the shooter's eye, especially from distance. Just one for six for Quincy and two for seven for Drury in the early going. Panthers with the basketball. Gomez covered by Sonor. Gomez down low. Shot's going to be off the iron, taken by Jamal Cummings, who's just checked in from Vauxhall, New Jersey, an area I'm quite familiar with. I've driven through it many times when I've been back home. Ball goes off the hands of Vaughn Washington. We'll go back the other way. Gomez with the basketball. Gets it over to Foster. Now over to Palmer. Back in the corner to Bundy to get it down low. Cummings layup, good. Good assist by Cameron Bundy. Absolutely, Bundy attracts so much tension, was able to drop it down to Cummings for the easy lay, and now Jamal Cummings all of a sudden four points off the bench. Let's send it over to Reed Benson here behind the Drury bench. Hey guys, out of that first media timeout, Drury coach uh, was stressing the need for his team to not be passive as they, uh, they're the higher seed in this tournament and they don't need to be on their heels. Uh, Cameron Bundy with a slow start here. Interesting story developing. Godson Nagwe yesterday was in a sling and uh, must have gotten dinged up in practice, but he's holding Bundy to uh, 0 for 4 shooting so far. So back to you guys. Thank you, Reed. Foul on the floor goes to Tevin Foster. That's going to be his first as Washington completes the three-point play, and we now have a 7-5 score. More substitutions for both sides. Douglas Moore's checked in. He's swinging around to Moore. Three ball on the way is good from Tevin Foster. The first make of a three tonight. Yeah, absolutely. Again, another open look for Jury is that they get this one to fall, but you cannot keep leaving the shooters open. This team can certainly knock it down. Vaughn Washington for three, and he answers right back. Great answer from Vaughn Washington, shooting 36% from behind the arc, averaging 10 points per game, as now he gets his sixth point of the night. Bundy right side gets it out top to Tevin Foster. Once again, Bundy out top. Bundy from the elbow, jumper, good. It's going to be a tough matchup there for Des Jardins, who just checked in for Quincy, as Bundy, I think arguably the best guard in the GLVC, especially at creating off the dribble. The Jardins. Over to Sonora, right side. Three ball on the way, he's gonna be off the iron. Rebounded down by Tevin Foster. Foster looks to push for the Panthers. Takes it down the lane, pulls it back out. Gets it over to Bundy, they swing it around the outside. Gamez, back out top to Foster. Near side, they bring it over to Moore. Bundy, four, three, got it. That's what Cameron Bundy does the best, working off the dribble, freeing himself up, and now Cameron Bundy saw one go through. We'll see if that wakes him up out of this slump. Five straight points now for Cameron Bundy to lead now up to seven for Drury, 15-8. Sonora right side. Washington with the ball covered by Bundy. Near side, Magai. 
Down low to go to Tagarelli. Tosses back out, five to go on the shot clock. Sonor spots for three. Off the back of the iron, no good. Cameron Bundy comes down with the rebound. Gomez comes out of the scrap mix with it, and it'll be a foul on Quincy. And that's just a no-nonsense foul there. You can't be fouling that far away from the basket. I understand you're trying to go for the rebound, but Bundy had that one pretty well secured. Just let that go because now that's his first personal foul for Washington as he heads to the bench. Washington picks up his first. He'll go to the bench. So Bundy now will run point for the Panthers. Gets it over to Douglas Moore. Moore picks up his dribble, covered out by Inagwe. Gets it back out to Bundy, 15 on the shot clock for the Panthers. Gomez turns the corner. Gomez stripped by Sonor. Ball goes out of bounds. Whose ball will it be? They say it's the Hawks' ball. Good play there from Sonor as he was able to get a hand on that basketball, knocked it loose, and ultimately forced the turnover. That's just the second turnover on the day for the Jury Panthers. They really done a good job taking care of the basketball here early on. John Edwards, Jordan Fisher here. Family Arena, St. Charles, Missouri. It's quarterfinal game number three of four on the night. Jordan will have the play-by-play -play of the 3-6 matchup between Truman State and Wisconsin Parkside. And a three ball from the left side by three, Nate DeJardins, the six-foot senior from Peoria, cuts into the deficit. And he can certainly shoot it from distance. 43% on the year, averaging eight points per game. He gets his first three today. Out top, it's Douglas Moore. Moore picks up his dribble, gets a backdoor cut. It'll go off the legs of Grant Boswell, who's checked into the game, and Quincy comes back the other way. Sonor uses Tagarelli's moving screen. Desjardins spots for another three off the iron, no good. Coming down with the rebound is Douglas Moore. Quincy's really ramped up the defensive pressure these last few possessions. See if they continue to do that. They've gotten away with a couple fouls potentially for reach-ins, but good defense so far. Bundy for three off the iron, no good. Rebounded down by Jordan Wilson, another local product here from Florissant, Missouri. Sonor spins, dishes to Tagarelli. He loses the handle on it, picks it back up. Double dribble, gets away with it. To the floor, down goes Jordan Wilson. It'll be a jump ball, possession arrow, favors Quincy. Media timeout on the floor. 11-17 to go in the first half. Jury leads 15-11. You got all the action at the 2016 Men's Basketball Our Championships here on the GLVC Sports Network, today. where champions are crowned. John Edwards, Jordan Fisher, Family Arena, game three of four of the men's quarterfinal here in the Great Lakes Valley Conference. Drury leads 15-11. Let's send it up first over to Reed Benzinger. Actually, we'll go with Jordan here out of the break. Jordan's going to talk a little bit about stats. Yeah, Cameron Bundy just two of six here early on, one of four from behind the arc. Now, remember last year against Quincy, the game was actually at Drury. Cameron Bundy knocked down about a 40-footer for the win and got that right before the buzzer. So he's certainly going to be looking to get his more of his shots and look for those to fall tonight. Now we'll go over to Reed Benzinger. At that timeout, Hawks coach Marty Bell happy with this team's performance so far, but encouraging them to go inside out as they do have the height advantage on the, the shorter Drury Panthers. But look for the Hawks to continue the inside out and see if that's successful. Back to you guys. Jordan Wilson scores for Quincy, and Cameron Bunny comes right back down and answers at the other end. I think what Reed was talking about, though, it's very, very uh, useful there because of the fact that I think Quincy does have the advantage on the inside. They need to try to go to the interior as Desjardins knocks down another three, but that's where they hold the advantage. I think that's where we're going to beat these Drury Panthers. Nate Desjardins knocks down his second three of the night, 
He's got six points, and it's now a one-point lead for Drury. Ball stripped away. Good defensive play. Sinor takes it, lays it up and in, and gives Quincy the lead for the first time here tonight. Second steal on the night for Quincy as well. He need two easy fast break points, and now have four fast break points. I don't know if you saw what was going on before, in between here, but coming out of that mix, and a three ball knocked down on the other side by Tevin Foster. But on that fast okay, break Tevin by Herm Sinor, Edson Inagwe got away with a little bit of a push off as Foster was trying to get back defensively. He gave him a little push off so he couldn't get into play. Inagwe will try to do that as he knocks down his three here. But he's certainly a physical player. He'll get up in your grill. We've seen it tonight multiple times. He was the one that sprung that steal for free. It's four straight three pointers back and forth for both sides and Quincy now has a two point lead. Foster spots for three and drains another one. I think everybody's Foster. depth perception is fine now. They're settled into the game. Five consecutive threes between the two teams. They're just exchanging blows here. Another three on the way, and it's knocked down by Nate Desjardins. Can't ask for much more. Six consecutive threes combined from each side. I mean, both these teams shooting at lights out right now, and neither can really pull away from the other. Foster out top, looks for Bunny, can't get there. Foster goes around the screen, looks for the cutter, doesn't have it. It's going to be stripped away by Inagwe. Sonor up top to Inagwe, and he jams one home. What a play there as Sonora tracked the attention, threw it up to Inagwe, finished with the right hand. That's going to get Quincy really going here defensively, see if they can capitalize. Jumper from the left side off the front of the iron, no good by Douglas Moore. And Nate Desjardins slows things down, and Quincy now has a four-point lead. No. Whistle and a timeout on the floor. It looks like there's a player who's cut, so it'll have to, in, Ensign Inagwe may have lost a contact lens. Three-point shooting is heated up here in this first half. Quincy, five of 10. Drury, four of seven. Get a look at this replay of the fast break by Sonor. He just throws it up top, and Inagwe just jams one home. Can't get much of a better play there, especially in transition. That really got the Quincy bench going, and. Got the team into it. See if they can capitalize and continue to build on their momentum. Magahi down low. They're looking for Tangarelli. Nothing there. Now the fifth turnover for the Quincy Hawks as both teams each have five turnovers here in this first half. Bundy goes right side, covered by Desjardins. Goes to the right. Dishes down low. Shot is good by Jamal Cummings. Great drop Jamal off there from Bundy. He went one-on-one, -on -one, attracted the attention, and was able to just find his man in the lane, setting up Cummings for an easy two-point bucket. Down low, layup attempt by Tagarelli's miss, no good, gets his own rebound. Three ball on the way, it's good by Bobby Frasco. Three point miss, number 12. Bobby Frasco. Five point lead now for the Hawks of Quincy. Bundy at the elbow, shot's no good, but he's gonna get fouled by Nate Desjardins. First foul on Desjardins will step aside media timeout. 29-24 is your score. Quincy leads Drew. You got all the action of the 2016 uh, men's basketball championships here on the GLVC Sports Network, where champions are crowned. As a health services major, I actually look forward to returning to a hospital one day. When I was a junior in high school, I collapsed on the court and suffered a stroke. My left side was paralyzed. I spent nine days in the hospital and had to teach myself to walk again. And now, I'm playing tennis in college, hoping one day to help others the way they help me. I'm Morgan McGinnis, and the GLVC is me. Was that the Bundy jumper? 35 to go in the first half. Quincy leads 29 25. 
one of the officials came over to tell us that they checked out a shot that happened around the 10 minute mark and changed it from a two pointer to a three pointer. Our officials tonight, Jerry Scherzinger, Greg Renner, Gar Renner Garby, and Terry Pollard. Well, it was either Tevin Foster's three, he had two from 940 to 10.07 there, or Godson and Agwe who had one at 9.53. Not sure exactly which one that is, but those are the shots that were occurring around that area. Bundy second is good. 29-27 is your score. Out top, it's Jordan Wilson. Jumper from the baseline is good by Joe Tagarelli. Tagarelli to 6'5", junior from Bayside, Wisconsin, knocks down, and he's got two on the night. He finally gets one to go, one of his first three to start this game. Out top, it's Jamal Cummings. Baseline drive by Foster. Kicks it around. Ball's knocked out of the hands by Godson Inagwe. Three ball from the right side. is going to be short up in the air. Coming down with it is Inagwe, and he travels. Send it over to Reed, uh, yeah, Reed Benzinger in front of the... Uh, the that last time out, Drury's coach was talking to his players about the just same thing that uh, Marty Bell of the Quincy Hawks was saying for his players to do is guard the, guard the three whenever they kick it inside. So that's a little bit interesting huddle to huddle comparison. On the Hawks side, uh, they're five for their last six on three pointers and Nate Destardin's catching fire with three for four from his last four. So look for the Hawks to continue to chuck up the threes and see if they continue to fall. Back to you guys. Thank you, Reed. And he gave us five of six in their last six three-pointers. And, and you can't get any hotter than that. Not at all. I mean, any, anytime you're getting 15 points on that good of a shooting right there, that's that's kind of the difference as to why Quincy is now back on top here, 31-27. Uh, it's really been the three-point shooting that got them back into this game and given them the lead. Jordan Wilson picks up the foul. That's going to be his second. At the foul line now is Tevin Foster. Foster on the season. 85, 84%, a little over 84%. One, he's 98 of 116 coming into tonight. Second is good. A uh, good shooter. Knocking it down there when he needs to at the foul line as he's now into double figures. Wilson brings it up court for the Hawks. Frasco right side. McGaughy. Down low, they go to Tagarelli. Tagarelli triple team kicks it cross court. Three ball by Fresco is good. That's the danger when you double down like that. Tagarelli attracting a lot of attention. Instead of trying to force something, he finds a teammate open in the corner. Fresco knocking down his second three of the game. Fresco with six down low. Cummings leaves one up and in. Jamal Cummings has been playing some good minutes off the bench. Now six points on three of four from the field. Back up court we go. Getting back is Jamal Cummings. He fouls Evan McGaughy, and that'll be Cummings' first foul. Just a case for Magali. After he gave up the bucket, raced down the other direction, beat everybody down the floor, and now he gives himself a chance at the line. Evan McGaffey shoots two shots. These two teams could play offense. We know that. A lot of up and down. We still have six minutes to go. We're going to be close to that midway point of Quincy where they average 80. Six points a game. I think the biggest thing to watch out for is this pace has been so high here early. If this pace continues throughout the game, I think the final five minutes are going to be telling to see which team is actually going to come away with the victory. It's really going to be whichever team is more conditioned. McGaughy's second is good. Four-point lead now for – five-point lead now for Quincy. Douglas Moore. Douglas Moore checks back into the contest. Out top, it's Foster. Foster double team. Swinging around to Douglas Moore. Cross court to Gomez, it goes off his fingers. Bullet pass up court, layup is good by Gonsin and Nagwe. What a pass up the floors. Sinor found him wide open, and Nagwe able to finish at the rim in transition. A near steal once again by Nagwe, who's got the defense on Cameron Bundy. Out top, it's Foster. Foster covered by Herm Sonor. Back over to Bundy. Bundy stutter step, kicks to the corner. 
Shot's going to be no good, but there'll be a foul as Moore went to the basket. Good job from Moore as he got the ball in the corner. Could have set up with a jumper instead, trying to get to the rim. Created himself an opportunity to get to the foul line as that's now the seventh team foul against the Quincy Hawks. Von Washington picks up the foul. That's going to be his second. Team seventh. First foul shot is up and good by Douglas Moore. Just a 63% shooter. Take a look you, at the replay here of that fastball that got thrown up court. Yeah, that was a Inagua. nice baseball pass up the floor, finding Inagwe leaking out. Second by Moore is good. It's a five-point lead for the Hawks. 5.20 to go in the first half. Longtime head coach over at Quincy, Marty Bell, in front of his bench, instructing his offense. Down low, they look for Sonora on the cross-court pass. Cuts, loses the ball, kicks. Tagarelli shot, rolls around. It's no good, but there'll be a foul on the floor. Herm Sonora might have got away with a double dribble there as he got caught in the air. Couldn't tell if the ball was stripped or if he just dropped it, but then he whipped it over and set up Tagarelli for a chance to get the foul line and actually see one go through. He's just one of three here early on for two points. Uh, well off of a scoring average, but 73% shooter at the foul line. Tagarelli misses the first. 6'5", junior from Bayside, Wisconsin. Leads the team in scoring 16 half, 16 and a half points per game. He was 71 for 97 coming into tonight. Average is six and a half rebounds a game. Knocks down the second of two and it's a six point lead now for Quincy. Largest lead of, uh, the largest lead of the night. Moore, baseline, Moore, jumper, no good. Ball gets tapped out. It's going to go out of bounds. It'll be Quincy basketball. Chance here before the under four timeout for Quincy to go on a run here and make a, they're still in the lead of double digits as they played some pretty good basketball here, now shooting 58% from the floor after starting just one for their first seven. The Jardins gets the ball away from Bundy. They swing it around cross court to Inagwe, near side to Desjardins. Tagarelli baseline, jumper's good. And now that Tagarelli's seen one go down from the foul line, perhaps his jumper's gonna start to fall now as he now has five points for the Quincy Hawks. Hawks now up by eight. Foster's three from the right side is up, it's good. Foster now four for four from behind the arc for 14 points as he's already at his scoring average of 14.4 per game. We talked about it during the pregame about the fact that this Quincy team has won four of its last six games. Their two losses came by two points. This is a team that lost their first game, three games of the season, then went on to win five in a row before a loss to Truman State, and then went on to win six in a row before they won a couple more. So this is a team that comes very streaky into the postseason. They've clearly had some hot streaks. Out oh, here. Oh, wow. Oh, the Jardins to Godson and Nagwe. What a play. That just looks so effortless as Nagwe is able to free himself Great pass from Desjardins there to set him up for the dunk. A whistle and a foul on the floor underneath the basket. 3.42 to go in the first half. Quincy leads 43-36. We'll get a look at that replay of Edson, uh, Godson and Agwe when we come back. Get all the action into 2016. In the Great Lakes Valley Conference, we are 16 NCAA Division II institutions comprised of 5,500 student athletes, more than 50,000 students. Yet when one of us becomes a victim of sexual assault, it's on us, all of us. It's our responsibility to be there for her, for him. Anyone can be a victim. Everyone can be a solution. It's on us. It's on us. To stand up, not stand by. In the GLBC, we stand together. Because when you're a victim of sexual assault, no one should stand alone. It's on us. It's, it's on us. It's on us. It's on us. 16 schools. One conference. Looking out. For one another.
Welcome back to Family Arena here in historic St. Charles, Missouri, as Quincy leading right now over the Jury Hawks, or Jury Panthers, excuse me. Both teams shooting high percentage from the field, 61% from the field for Quincy, 57% for Drury, and right now it's been the three ball that's really helped Quincy, seven of 13 from behind the arc to really be the difference in this one. Respectively, respectively, Drury shooting five of eight. Bundy's three uh, foul shot is no good. Aaron pass by Herm Sonor goes out of bounds. It'll be Drury basketball. Get a look at the replay of that earlier pass by Desjardins. Effortless pass, but look at. What a catch and a dunk there from Inagwe. So he had to adjust to his left and catch that and still bring it back. That's, inc that's insane athleticism. Inagwe, he's got really long arms because he was far away from the basket itself. Bundy out top trailing by seven, under three and a half to go. Foster's three from the left corner is no good. Tagarelli with the rebound. Gets it up to Herm Sonor. Sonor spins up under, no good. It's partially blocked. Foster comes out of the mix with the ball. Foster pushes, finds the go to the basket. The layup is good by Jamal Cummings. Tra just transition offense there from the Jury Panthers, just too good as Quincy couldn't get back on defense after Sonor had a little bit of a questionable shot selection there on the last possession. Cummings now with eight. McGaughy with for three balls off the front of the iron, no good. Off the fingertips of a few players and coming out of it is Cameron Bundy. Foster to Bundy. Bundy covered by Desjardins. Foster out top covered by Sonor. Bundy spins, Bundy up and under, throws one up looking for a foul, doesn't get it, but it's rebounded down by Jamal Cummings, who's got points off the board, now, off, the, off the bench now, he's got 10. 10 points, that's his first rebound as well, as that's what they gave him there on points that shot. Points off the bench, Quincy leads 17-12, points in the paint, jury with a slight advantage, 16-12. Shots blocked underneath the basket by Joshua Palmer will go back the other way as we approach two minutes to go in the first half. Looks like Cameron Bundy wanted to slow it down a little bit. This pace has been rampant high this, this uh, first half. Both teams over 40 points here. Gomez. Bundy. Out top. It's Palmer. Foster drives, spins, floater. Off the iron, no good. There's going to be a foul underneath the basket. Looks like it might be going against Quincy Hawks. Just waiting to see who it's on. I didn't see the number. It hasn't been announced yet. I, Jamal Cummings with 10 points uh, here tonight. First trip to the foul line is good. And last foul was on number three, Nate Desjardins. That's his first. The Desjardins picks up the foul, his second. It's Jamal the Cummings, ninth. Jamal Cummings having himself quite a game off the bench. 11 points now, one of one from the free throw line. Also has two rebounds as well. Second foul shot by Cummings is short. Tagarelli with the rebound. Cummings comes into tonight, averaging five points a game and three boards. He's coming off the bench. He's given 11 points to the Panthers tonight. Sidor. Down low, Tagarelli loses the defender and lays one up and in. Great work from Tagarelli to free himself. Looks like Cunningham's might have went a little bit over the top trying to get that steal, leaving Tagarelli really wide open for the layup. Bundy out top. Gomez. Baseline to Palmer. Foster's jumper right side, no good. There's going to be a loose ball foul. We'll go the other direction. That's going to be on Jamal Cummings. That'll be his second. Just a six-team foul as well. Substitution, Grant Boswell comes in for Tevin Foster. Four point lead for the Hawks, 45-41. 73 seconds to go here in the first half. First one goes in for McGaughy. McGaughy, a 70% free throw shooter on the year. Certainly can get it done at the free throw stripe, which is always something you look for in a big guy. 6'8 junior, red, a redshirt junior forward. 
having himself a nice, nice year, 13 points, eight rebounds per game. Knocks down both, and the Hawks' lead goes back up to 647-41. Bundy brings the ball up court, hands it over to Gomez. Moore out top to Boswell. Back over to Bundy right side. One minute to go, Boswell kicks back to Bundy. Bundy pump fake, three ball on the way, it's good. It's a tough shot from Cameron Bundy, but it's just one that he is capable of making. How many players can make that shot as you start to move and then stop and pull up? That's a tough shot, but that's a tough shot from a very good player. Bundy now with 12, he's four of nine from the floor, two of five from behind the arc. Right side, it's Frasco. They swing it around to Jardins for three from the left corner. It's good. He answers with his own three. Does Jardins is having a great game. Now four, uh, four or five from behind the arc for 12 points. He is certainly getting it done for Quincy. 54 of 120 is DeJardins. Out top, it's Boswell. Two second difference between the shot clock and the game clock. Gomez with seven. Gets it over to Boswell. Out top to Bundy. Bundy with four, three. He fires off the iron, no good. Rebounded down by Bobby Frasco. Sonor from half court at the buzzer. Off the back of the iron, no good. But the Quincy Hawks will take a 50 to 44 lead into the half. Hot shooting in the first half. Quincy shot. 58% from the floor. Jury shoots 52%, but they trail by six at the end of the half. Let's send over to Reed Benzinger with head coach Marty Bell. Here with coach Marty Bell of the Quincy University Hawks. What do you think? Well, two teams just throwing punches and counter punches. Uh, you know, both teams making threes, making stops. Um, it's a typical GLBC game. That's right. Uh, what do you think of the hot shooting of your team? What do you credit that to? Well, we've been like that a lot of times this year, and, and we're getting some stops, which is creating some easy offense for us, which gives us confidence even in the half court. So we need to do that two halves, though. I mean, we, as well as we shot, we're only up six. So we're going to have to do a better job defensively, keeping them off the line, and make sure we got our feet under ourselves on those shots in the second half. All right. Thanks for the time. Back to you guys. Marty Bell chats for a few moments in his Quincy Hawks lead at the half, 50 to 44. We'll step aside, we'll come back with some interviews during the half. You got all the action in the 2016 men's basketball tournament here on the GLVC Sports Network, where champions are crowned. Back here at the half, Quincy leads 50 to 44. Joining us now here is the Director of Athletics down at Drury University, it's Mark Fisher. And Mark, thanks for joining us for a few minutes. Well, thanks for having me. Excited. Last year I sat here with you and we talked and your son Ben had an outstanding tournament. How's he doing? 
He's doing well. Uh, he's actually doing some radio uh, with John Miller today, and uh, so he's uh, he's uh, staying busy uh, there as a grad student at Drury, and uh, so having a good year. A lot of a lot of things going on with Drury. You guys just announced you'll have a wrestling program. Talk a little bit about that and how it came about. We are. We're excited to have wrestling, and uh, with Drury uh, coming in uh, with the uh, with the wrestling, uh, it will make it a uh, GLBC sport. Uh, as far as the conference championship. And uh, we hired James Reynolds, an assistant at Maryville University, and uh, he's hit the ground running and, and doing a great job. Talk about the, the program itself, and, and wrestling is starting to become a bigger sport within the conference itself, and adding it just adds one more championship down the road for the conference. It really does. And, you know, southwest Missouri is an area that uh, – when Missouri State, uh, when they, the, their program folded back in the mid-90s, um, it's, it's been um, absent from the collegiate ranks down there. So we have great high school wrestling in the area, and, and we think that it'll be a great addition not only to the campus but to uh, southwest Missouri, and it will give something for our high school kids to thrive, to be able to, to compete at that next level and be able to compete uh, locally. Your women's basketball team off to a good start yesterday, a big win, they shot light. As a health services major, I actually look forward to returning to a hospital one day. When I was a junior in high school, I collapsed on the court and suffered a stroke. My left side was paralyzed. I spent nine days in the hospital and had to teach myself to walk again. And now, I'm playing tennis in college, hoping one day to help others the way they help me. I'm Morgan McGinnis, and the GLVC is me. She understands the game. We have so much to celebrate in Division II, but we're especially proud of our commitment to make a wish. Division II student athletes have led a 10 year initiative to raise funds and help grant wishes of children with life threatening medical conditions. Nearly $3 million have been raised, and hundreds of children's wishes have been granted. We play hard, we work hard, and we support others in need. Why? It's simple. Because we care. Hello there, I'm Dave Manuel, and I'm pleased to serve as president of Drury University in Springfield, Missouri. And I'm also here to welcome and to congratulate all the GLVC student athletes. Best wishes this year. My dad is an architect who taught himself English, earned his PhD, and helped lay the foundation for our journey. We moved from California to England to Egypt to Bahrain and then to Qatar. I am an Egyptian and an American citizen. I speak Arabic, French, and Spanish. And here I am in Missouri surrounded by teammates from five countries. My goal in life? Work at the United Nations to help build a better world. I'm Hadil Ali, and the GLVC is me. Any other tidbits that we can share that we don't know about? I'm Dr. Bob Gervaisi, president of Quincy University in Quincy, no, Illinois, wishing to, the best uh, to all to, the student uh, athletes of the Great Lakes Valley Conference. Go Hawks! They say a picture is worth a thousand words. We beg to differ. They are snapshots that represent lasting memories, stories to be told for years to come. Our story is one pictured not just with trophies, but with diplomas, friendships, a helping hand. New chapters beginning every season. This is the story of the Great Lakes Valley Conference. <laughs> Hi, this is Mark Fisher of Drury University. I want to wish all the student athletes of the Great Lakes Valley Conference the best of luck this season. Go Panthers! It's a great transition going from the high school to, to the uh, collegiate route, and uh, everybody, uh, everyone's been very helpful to me. Mark, thanks for joining us for a few minutes. Enjoy the rest of the weekend. <laughs> Take care. Thank you. Mark Fisher, the Director of Athletics for Drury University, joins us for a few minutes. We'll step aside. We'll come back. We'll have high school. We'll have We'll have stats from the first half. You get all the action in the 2016 GLVC Men's Basketball Championships here on the GLVC Sports Network, where champions are crowned.
John Edwards, Jordan Fisher back here, Family Arena. We're at the half. Quincy leads 50 to 44 over to Drury Panthers and Jordan. We talked about two teams that like to score a lot of points. They got after it in the first half. What about their shooting percentage? Well, I mean, that, that's exactly what it has been in the first half. Both teams shooting above 50% for both uh, just the field and behind the arc as well. I mean, really the difference here is Quincy said a couple more threes, and that's exactly the difference in the score. Uh, I mean, both these teams are just trading blows. You you heard it earlier with the, the halftime co our interview with uh, Quincy's head coach, and certainly both these teams just trading buckets, really balanced scoring for both sides, and, I mean, you can't really ask for much of a better game, especially in the tournament. If Quincy wants to hold on to the lead in the second half, what do you think they need to do? Well, they got to continue to kind of stifle Cameron Bundy. He has 12 points, but on just 4 of 10 shooting, he's really kind of struggled. And I really like the matchup putting Gotson and Agua out of him, a very long, lanky defender who's also very athletic for his size. And so he's kind of given Bundy some fits as far as running around screams, not getting much of space, because uh, a lot of Bundy's points have come against whenever the team switches off of him. Uh, so I think that's one thing is you have to continue to control Cameron Bundy, but also Quincy's owned the board so far. They're winning the battle 17-12 to 12 there. Obviously, I think both these teams are going to cool off in the second half, so it's really going to come down to rebounding and defense for me. If Drury's going to come from behind and win, what do they need to do? I think it gets Cameron Bundy more involved, but also use his ability to attract the defenders to open up other teammates. You have to have other teammates start to knock down shots. Let's send it over to Reed Benzinger, who has... And welcome back to the floor of the Quincy Hawks. Second half action, getting ready to start. Teams are out on the court warming up. Our late matchup is the 3-6 matchup between Wisconsin Parkside and Truman State. What do you think about that matchup? I think, well, that's a tough game. Both these, t both those teams are certainly good on the court. I know from what I've seen from this year, they're both very talented teams that can play inside First. and out. Um, but certainly, you know, it's a good, good effort. A little bit of technical difficulties. It looks like we're actually going to send it to Reed Bensinger as he was ready to go. Uh, but we weren't ready for that. No, but I mean, we that's weren't ready. Part of the live stream, and there you go. <laughs> Let's send it over to Reed Bensinger, who's got Steve Hasser. We're here with the coach of Drury Panthers, uh, Coach Tram by six to a Quincy University team. Uh, what are your thoughts on the first half? Well, we better get out and guard the three point line. I mean, as you said earlier, they're eight for 16 from there. And, you know, they do a good job of throwing it inside, and they do a good I mean, job of throwing of it back stuff. outside and, and shooting threes. And they've been very efficient, and we got to do a better job. Also, a few of your players got two fouls there early. Did that have an impact on the first half? Well, I mean, we set one of them. He only played four minutes, so, but he, he's uh, ready to go this last 20, so we'll, we'll just go from there. All right, good luck. Back to you guys. How are you? All right, well, thank you, Reed. As you just heard there, Reed Benzinger with the – Halftime report with head coach Steve Hesser there as he just got finished up talking there and certainly it was a good there as Reed just recapped all that. Got to, got to talk with head coach Steve Hesser. He's got to defend the three ball and I think I got to agree with him, Quincy. As we just talked about, 8 of 16 from behind the arc, 50%. They've really knocked down their shots from the perimeter and it really I think it's been the offensive that's really kind of opened up the shots for them. Scott Perrier, the sports information director over at Drury, just dropped by and gave us a stat. 50 points given up by Drury in the first half. Uh, it's been 139 games in which they've done that. They've given up more than 50 and a half. The last time happened, it was 56 points against Wesleyan. Well, that's not certainly a bad team to be giving those points up to. Wesleyan's certainly a good team. Uh, I mean, you're going to have halves like that, but I think it's one of those things where I thought both teams really played good defense. It was just a lot of better offense. I mean, a lot of hot shooting when they did get open. And I, think, I mean, both teams, I think, are going to cool off. That's just kind of the average. I mean, people are going to shoot around 40 to 50 percent, not well above 50 percent. So we'll have to see which team is able to continue their hot streak for the longest time to be able to potentially, if it's Quincy, build a lead or jury possibly retake the lead. Uh, but certainly good second half shaping up here four years it's been since they've given up more than 50 points and a half. That's that's pretty incredible. I mean, defensive effort for sure. Uh, today, like I said, hot shooting, that's just part of it, but it, you're going to have to roll with it. I mean, Drury scored 44 to themselves, so it's not like they're out of the game because they allowed 50 points, but certainly you don't want to allow another 50 points because that's just going to put a lot of pressure on your offense to execute. Thanks to Scott Perrier for that nugget of information as we get ready for second half action. It'll be Drury basketball to start the second half. Another thing I want to kind of touch on here, I think it's going to come down to who takes care of the basketball. Both teams only with seven turnovers in the first half. If 
Both have played some pretty pressure defense, though. Uh, so if one team starts to kind of get careless with the ball, we could see the other team either, as I said, jury retake the lead or Quincy pull away. Uh, both these teams are certainly capable on the offensive end, but it's going to come down to execution, I think, and defense for sure. You talk about the fact that both teams have seven turnovers apiece in the first half. Points off the turnover. Quincy has nine, Drury with eight. So we're talking about a point of turnover pretty much for both sides. Bundy will bring the ball over midcourt. Foster right side. Out top to Drew Moore playing with two fouls. Bundy out top. Drew Moore baseline. More dishes, Gomez layup, good. They got Gomez for the layup, but Bundy was actually left wide open on the right wing. Kind of surprised they didn't go to him to try to get him immediately involved. An Agwe shot, no good. Von Washington picks up the rebound. Washington playing with fouls. Shot is no good by McGuire. Foster with the basketball. Foster drives. Gets the ball back out top. Palmer. Bundy, back over to Foster, they run the offense. 10 on the shot clock, Bundy through the lane, floater off the iron, good. Too easy of a look for Cameron Bundy, good job of himself freeing him up using the screen, uh, but you allow Cameron Bundy to get that good a look, it's gonna be a long night for the Quincy Hawks. Bundy deceptively good as he went to, when he got to the elbow, because he, he looked the defender off. And Agway out top, Washington, dishes to the corner to Herm Sinor. Anagwe tries to dribble between two defenders, between the legs of Tagarelli, uh, picked up by Drew Moore. Shot up and good and a foul. Great job from Drew Moore. Getting his first made buck of the night, not one of two from the field as he was in foul trouble most of that first half, but he stopped. I thought it was good defense by McGaughy. And instead, just a very tough shot there for Drew Moore. Foul's going to be on McGahey. Drew Moore's foul shot is up and good, and Drury retakes the lead. Quick 7-0 run here for the Panthers. Got them back on top here. Quincy going to have to answer. Sinor, McGahey, down low, Tagarelli, shot good. That's one way to answer. Go down to Joseph Tagarelli, your leading scorer. Just get him down on the block. Let him try to create something for himself, and he's able to knock home the right-hand hook shot. Moore left side. Gomez kicks. Palmer gives it to Bundy. Bundy around two screens. Bundy for three. Off the iron, no good. Rebound down underneath by Joshua Palmer. Baseline and a foul on Tagarelli. Quincy fouls on number five, Joseph Tagarelli. His second, the team's second. Tagarelli second, team second here in the half. Already two team fouls for Quincy here in just the first couple minutes. Got to have to do a better job of defending without fouling. This jury team can knock it down when they get to the free throw line, so you want to keep them out of the penalty. 75% as a team on the year. Whistle and a foul on the loose ball. That's going to be on Godson and Agwe. That's going to be his third. Godson and Agwe. Third, the third. And Inagua has done a very good job today. He's got nine points here so far today. A couple of dunks on alley-oops, and he's a very, very versatile defender, has been a big part of keeping Cameron Bundy pretty well out of the scores column for the most part as far as shooting percentage goes. But looks like Inagua is going to stay in the game but despite having three fouls. Okay, a lot of time left, 17.55 to go. Bundy down low. It goes to Drew Moore. Moore backs in. Moore spins, double dribbles. It'll be a turnover for Drury. Yeah, he knew it the second he actually put it on the or put it on the floor. Uh, Drew Moore just trying to free himself up. I think he got in the midst of wanting to pass it out and instead just elected to take the double dribble instead of getting a turnover to give the Quincy Hawks a transition opportunity. Sonor over midcourt. Magahe gets away with a carry himself. Inagwe around the screen. Inagwe drives, shot up off the glass, no good. Gomez with the rebound. Bundy pushes it up the center of the court for the Panthers. Kicks it, Gomez, left side, three, it's good! Great job from Gomez to run down the floor and get in the corner. Bundy with the great floor vision, he set that up by stopping, attracting all the attention, and then skipping it to the corner for the open three. Washington left side, Sonor, three ball from the left corner is no good. Rebounded down by Joshua Palmer.
three ball is good by Tevin Foster and a whistle and a timeout taken by Marty Bell. They led by six at the half. They trail by five. It's immediate timeout. We'll step aside. Jury leads 57-52. You got all the action in the 2016 Men's Basketball Championships here on the GLVC Sports Network where champions are crowned. Back inside the family arena, John Edwards and Jordan Fisher, second half action. So we get a look at the last three ball taken. Just great job from Cameron Bundy to stop and attract the three players at the top of the key, freeing them up for the corner three as Gammy's buries that one. It's a five point lead for the Panthers. McGahey, Washington, he'll spot for three. It's good. Tough shot from Vaughn Washington in the third as that might be something that kind of sparks the Quincy Hawks as they've really struggled here in the second half. It's now two of six. Turnover as the ball goes off at Drew Morris' fingertips. Quincy runs it back the other way. Washington out top. Tagarelli spots for three pinballs in and out. Gamis with the rebound. Foster will bring it back up court for the Panthers. Substitutions getting set to come in for the Panthers in front of the scorer's table. Next whistle. Gamis out top. Foster looks for the cutter, can't find anyone. Back out top, Palmer. Under 10 on the shot clock, whistle and a foul. That'll be on Nate Desjardins. That'll be his third. He's a player that likes to come off the bench, providing an energy spark for the Hawks, especially with his defense and him having three personal fouls. Could be huge. And also, he's been knocking it down from behind the arc, four or five today from behind the three-point line. Douglas Moore and Jamal Cummings check back in. Douglas Moore, just a freshman out of Lawton, Oklahoma. Good minutes in the first half. Jamal Cummings, though, had 11 points off the bench in that first half. The junior from Vauxhall, New Jersey. Out top, it's Bundy. Bundy dribble drives. He gets slapped on the arm. We can hear it over here. And that's probably going to be going against Desjardin, so that's going to be his fourth personal foul. As now he'll probably have to take a seat. Media timeout on the floor. We'll step aside. Quincy trails 57-55. You get all the action. In Every day, Drury students make invaluable connections. Connecting community to service. Service to experience. And experience to fun. Drury students learn how to connect dreams and aspirations to successful futures. Drury University. Powerful connections, invaluable experience. Every day. Connect with Drury at drury.edu.
Welcome back to Family Arena here in St. Charles, Missouri, as Drury has regained the lead 57-55 here at the under-16 timeout. Drury 5 of 6 to start the second half for 83%, and that's really been key as they're also 2 for 3 from behind the arc. Meanwhile, Quincy just 2 of 7 here early on in this second half. Cameron Bunny will go to the foul line. He'll shoot two, makes the first of two. We had Nate DeJardin sound for four fouls, but we're looking at the official score right now, and they have him listed for three. We'll have to see what happens there. He said, I, I have him down for four as well. Right now it's all showing three, so that's a break for the Quincy Hawks. Sinor brings the ball up over midcourt, gets it over to DeJardins, who was a three-point threat in the whole first half. Back out top, Sinor. Stripped, ball's on the floor. Who's gonna get there? And they're gonna get a timeout taken by Quincy. We'll stay here. Let's go over to Reed Benzinger behind the Quincy bench. Coming out of a very interesting timeout there in the under 16 timeout, the Quincy University huddle uh, was equal conversation between the player and the coach. Usually the coach does the talking, but that may attribute to the team success of Quincy. Uh, even though they kind of are out to a sluggish start in the second half, uh, looks like they're they're working together and have the said they've been here before with close games. So we'll see if that that comes to fruition. Back to you guys. Thank you, Reed, and players coming out of the huddle. I talked about Nate Desjardins being a three-point threat in that first half. He was four of five for 12 points. Yeah, he's been fantastic today. Came in shooting 43% from behind the arc. Anytime you shoot 80% in a game, that's pretty good. McGahey, down low, Tagarelli. Baby hook is up and good at the, sh at the shot clock buzzer. And it's a two-point lead now for Drury. Great high-low action there from Magahi and Tagarelli. Is, Tagarelli's really been working down low here this half as he now has 11 points here on this game. Right side, Foster. Foster drives, slashes the lane, layup is good. T tough shot there from Tevin Foster. He's shown his ability to score today as well. Now 19 points on 6 of 9 shooting. Down low, Tagarelli spins, kicks, Magahi for three. Pinballs, no good. Bundy with the rebound. Bundy will push for the Panthers. Near side, it's Moore. Back out top to Foster, and he travels. Foster didn't really like that call. He's looking around at the other officials, but he shuffles feet there before he started his dribble, so that's a good call. Just the, uh, actually just the first, or excuse me, second turnover of the half for the Drury Panthers. Palmer and Moore come in for Drury. Checking back in for Quincy is going to be Bobby Frasco. Vaughn, Washington, right side. Frasco in the corner, back out top. They go to Desjardins. Desjardins spins, drives the lane, layup off the glass is no good. And coming out of the mix is Drew Moore with the rebound. Foster at midcourt. I thought they were going to push it up for a minute, and Foster slowed it down. Palmer hands to Bundy. Boswell around the arc. They go back to Palmer. Palmer looks for the cutter, picks up his dribble, gets it over to Drew Moore. Moore hands it to Bundy. Bundy covered by Desjardins, puts the shoulder down, and there's going to be an offensive foul on Cameron Bundy. Good defense there from Desjardins there to slide over, take the contact against Cameron Bundy, as that's going to be Bundy's first personal. So not, nothing too dangerous here for Jury, but something you certainly can't have happen if you're Cameron Bundy. Gammies checks back into the lineup for Drury. He'll come in for Tevin Foster. Foster will go to the bench with 19 points. He's six of nine from the floor. He's five of six from behind the arc. Sinor, Washington, they play catch out top. Three ball from the right corner is good by Bobby Frasco. Three point basket by Bobby Frasco. He's knocked down a few of them tonight. Now three of three from behind the arc for nine points is Frasco. On the year, just 35% behind the arc. Palmer gives it to Moore out top. Tagarelli gets away with a hand check. Gamiz loses the ball, two on one the other way for the Hawks. Comes back, Washington layup, good. 
Great transition uh -huh. offense there from the Quincy Hawks. Good spacing. Sonora again getting out and creating for his teammates instead of taking to the cup himself. And the Quincy Hawks retake the lead, 62-61. Palmer down the other end, puts it back home and gives Drury the, re the lead once again. Tough shot for Palmer, now four points on two of three shooting as he's really had a struggle here early on as far as finding open space. Sonor down low, Tagarelli layup, good. It's great offense from the Hawks, quickly attacking. Tagarelli continue to work down low. Bundy out top, Bundy puts the shoulder down, put Gets away with a push. Drew Moore baseline. Moore gets away with a hop step off the iron and it rolls in for Drew Moore. Drew Moore. Moore now at six. And a seesaw battle we have. Defense has kind of disappeared. Tagarelli travels. Game number 22. Substitutions for both sides. Jordan Wilson and Evan McGahee back in the lineup for Quincy. Foster will check back in, as well as Doug Moore for Drury. It's a one point lead for the Drury Panthers. They trailed at the half by six. They got back up as, by as many as six here in the half. Gammies drives baseline, turns and travels. That's the third or fourth time we've seen that where someone drives in, stops and then switches their pivot feet I know a couple fans behind us are wanting a foul there, but I think that's just good defense, and Gammy's ended up just shuffling his feet, got caught in a bad position, and that's just an unforced turnover. Six turnovers now in the half for Drury. They had seven the whole first half. Magahi, baseline drive off the glass. It's good, and a foul. What a tough shot there, shot there from Magahi as he was able to get in, draw the contact, and he held it for the last possible second and let it go right before he landed. Certainly, he has played a good basketball game today as now he has six points, making his first, or eight points, excuse me now, he's now made a second free, or field, field goal. Get a look at the replay on this. As he drives through the middle, Moore on his back, and the ball bounces in as he goes to the line for one and knocks it down, and it's now a two-point lead for the Hawks at Quincy, under 12 minutes to go here in the second half. That last foul on Moore is also his third personal. Out top, it's gonna to be Drew Moore. Gets it to Tevin Foster. 15 on the shot clock, Foster with the basketball, looking for some help. He finds Doug Moore. Bundy, stutter step, Bundy dishes, it'll go out of bounds. They say off for Magahi, it'll be Drury basketball. Media timeout. Quincy takes the lead back in the second half, 67-65. You get all the action in the 2016. Every day, Drury students make invaluable connections. Connecting community to service. In the Great Lakes Valley Conference. We are 16 NCAA Division II institutions. Comprised of 5,500 student athletes. More than 50,000 students. Yet when one of us becomes a victim of sexual assault, it's on us, all of us. It's our responsibility to be there for her. For him. Anyone can be a victim. Everyone can be a solution. It's on us. It's on us. To stand up, not stand by. In the GLBC, we stand together. Because when you are a victim of sexual assault, no one should stand alone. It's on us. It's on us. It's on us. It's on us. 16 schools, one conference, looking out for one another. Welcome back to the GOVC Conference quarterfinals tournament. As we're actually in the quarterfinal round, Jury actually trailing here to Quincy, 67-65. This game has had 15 lead changes. Both teams shoot a good percentage. Quincy, 50% from the field in the second half, 7 of 14. Jury, 8 of their first nine for 88%. What numbers as, we, as the game continues to go. Hook shot from Drew Moore drops. Drew Moore. So and make, we're tied up at 67. Make that nine of 10 for the Drury Panthers. They have been absolutely on fire in this second half. Three ball from the corner, no good. Magahi with the rebound. His hook shot's gonna be no good. Drew Moore will get the rebound. It's gonna be a shot off the iron. There's gonna be a foul. Let's see who that's on. 
Quincy fouls on number 22, Jordan Wilson. That's his third. Jordan Wilson picks up the foul. That's going to be his third. For the Hawks. It's also already the 16th foul against the Hawks, and we still have 11 minutes left to play in this second half. Quincy in danger of letting Drury get into the bonus where they're very good from the foul line. On the inbound, they get it out to Drew Moore out top. Gammy's finger roll layup off the iron Wilson is good. Great move there from Gammy's. He's able to get in the lane, go through the contact, maneuvers his way around the defender and finish at the cup. Whistle and a foul, and it's going to be an offensive foul as Gammy scores the bucket at one end. He sacrifices the body at the other and draws an offensive foul. A great sequence there from Gammy's as he's got right back on defense and slid over, took that contact, forcing the Quincy turnover. That's also the seventh team foul, although that won't result in free throws. Foul is going to be on Von Washington. That's going to be his third foul. It's going to be a whistle on the floor. Senior Cameron Bundy came into this season with 1,219 points, putting him 25th on the all-time scorers list at Drury. That's certainly not a bad accomplishment there for Cameron Bundy. He's had a good career, Drury. But just as what happened on there on the floor, Von Washington just picked up his fourth personal foul for Quincy, and he's been someone that's been fairly key today, 11 points and four or five shooting. He's now on the bench for, we'll see how long as he'll only have one more foul left to give here. Foul shot for Foster is up and good. Jury will go to the foul line the rest of the way as Quincy is over the limit at seven fouls. Foster's last made free throw now gave him 20 points on the night. Foster's second off the iron, no good. Rebounded down by Inagwe. Wilson brings the ball up court. Magahe loses the ball in front of his own bench. He regains it. Looks for some help, finds the Jardins. The Jardins to Magahe. Once again, loses the ball. I don't know really if you want your center to be handling the ball 40 feet from the basket. No, there was a fantastic pass from Magahe, but I agree with you on that one. He keeps handling the ball on the perimeter. Can I have that? You want him more towards the paint. Drury with a one-point lead, 70-69, to 69, approaching the midway part of the second half. Fouls is going to be on Jordan Wilson, his fourth. The basket's going to count for Drew Moore, and he'll look to complete the three-point play. Great job there from Moore as he was able to get into the lane, finish with the left hand over the contact as Wilson was just a little bit too late on trying to draw that, draw that charge. Get a look at that last replay. Good pass by Gammies as he gives it down to Drew Moore and not able to get underneath as Moore misses the foul shot. Jordan Wilson picks up his fourth foul. Desjardins and Nagwe and a foul. Wow. Foul is going to be on Douglas Moore. I thought Inagwe got away with extending his arm a little bit there as he was, I mean, both players just trying to go at it, both on the offensive defensive end, but I thought Inagwe could have got pulled for the, put or called for the push off as he kind of extended that right arm. Out top, it's Bobby Frasco. In the corner, Desjardins. Nagahe kicks it, Frasco for a three. It's good. Three point miss, goodbye. Bobby Frasco. Frasco knocks down another three. He's got 12, all from behind the arc. Perfect five for five from behind the three-point line for Frasco. And we're tied at 72. Foster for an NBA three off the front of the iron. Frasco with the rebound. Desjardins, three on three, gives it back. Frasco spots. Off the iron, no good. Drew Moore fumbles it, but it's going to be picked up by Tevin Foster. Panthers have numbers. Foster to Bundy. Bundy, finger roll, good. Good job to find Cameron Bundy in transition, getting him an easy bucket. Try to get him into a rhythm here as you try to pull away from Quincy. Foster with 20, Bundy with 18. Cummings with 11 and a whistle and a foul. Number 
24 for the Panthers. Douglas Moore with his third, the team's fourth. Into the game number five for Quincy. Chuck, Joseph Fagarelli into the game for Drury, number 31, Joshua Palmer. That last foul there against Douglas Moore, pretty obvious one is trying to get up in Inagwe's grill and try to poke the ball away. And instead, when Inagwe went to go drive, Moore didn't move at all. That's going to be a blocking call every single time. The officials down talking to Steve Hesser. Out top, Nagahe, Sonor, down low, Tagarelli. Tagarelli dishes, Inagwe jams one home! Godson Inagwe is such an athlete. We saw a couple of loops, now he goes through the lane. Good job from Tagarelli, attracting the double team, finding Inagwe, cutting through for the thundering right hand dunk. Out top, it's Bundy, double team. It's gonna be stolen away by Sonor. Two on one, dishes to Magahe, and he jams one home. Quincy building some momentum. Danger time here for the Jury Panthers. We are just near the under eight media timeout. Got to try to play it out here. Back the other way, and Cam Bundy gets fouled, and he'll go to the floor. Seven fifty nine to go in this Molly Whopper. Quincy leads this one 76-74. You got all the action in the 2016 GLVC Men's Basketball Championships on the GLVC Sports Network where champions are crowned. Welcome back to the Family Arena here in St. Charles, Missouri. Quincy on top, 76-74. Both teams shooting a high percentage. Quincy shooting 11 of 21, 52 percent. But Jury just scorching hot, 85 percent, 12 of 14. There was a dunk here from Evan McCauley right before the media timeout. Just wonderful transition offense from the Hawks again. There's Sonor setting up a teammate for the easy two. Cam Bundy goes to the foul line. He knocks down to first. If you look at the Midwest regional rankings as of March 1st, Wisconsin Parkside, who play in the nightcap, is sits number one in the region. And right behind him is Bellarmine. U Indy's in the five spot, so more than likely they'll make it as Bundy makes both of the free throws. Lewis is right behind them, so these two teams are fighting for a position to play. They need to win out in order to advance to the NCAA tournament. Absolutely, I think both teams need this win tonight and then a little bit of a run in the tournament today or for this weekend if they want to make the national tournament. Deshardens out top, Nagahe right side. Down low, they look for Anagwe and he gets fouled and it's going to be on Cameron Bundy. Not a bad foul there from Cameron Bunny. Breaks up the play, doesn't allow him to get the shot off. Although Inagwe thought, tried to get that ball up to make it a shot attempt, but only the second personal foul against Bundy. Tagarelli puts it to the floor. Gets it out to Magahe. Seven and a half minutes to go in this one. We're knotted up at 76. Down low, Tagarelli spins. Kicks it to Herm Sinor. Sonor loses it. Gamiz loses it back. Tagarelli with the basketball. 10 on the shot clock. Layup by Inagwe. Puts it in. Passing by Quincy has just been crisp here lately. And they're making some fantastic passes to find teammates. 
out of the 29 baskets that Quincy has made tonight, make that the 30 baskets Quincy has made, there's 26 assists. That is sharing the basketball, and that's good offensive basketball. Bundy spots three off the iron, no good. Tagarelli with the rebound. Sonor pushes it cross court. Vaughn Washington back in the game. Washington playing with four fouls. Tagarelli gets fouled. Let's send it over to Reed Benzinger on the other side of the court. An interesting development uh, tonight as this game continues to stay close. A two point game as both previous games in the quarterfinals of the men's tournament have been one possession game with both contests being three point difference. Uh, in this game, look for the free throws to be key as it continues to be close and it might come down to that for jury as they're already in the double bonus so far. So back to you guys. Thank you, Reed, and a whistle out on the court, and there'll be a timeout taken by Drury with 6.34 to go. They trail by two. We'll keep it here. Our nightcap tonight will be Wisconsin Parkside, the number one team in the region. They're the number three seed here in the GLVC tournament. They'll take on Truman State. The Bulldogs picked up a big win against Umsel last weekend on their own home court. Should be an interesting game. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Wisconsin Parkside, certainly the best team in the region. I think that's thanks to a little bit of the fact that Bellarmine lost USI just last week. Obviously, Bellarmine got their revenge earlier today and got the victory there in another close game, as Reed just talked about. But Wisconsin Parkside is one of the best teams in the region. Uh, I think it's up for debate who is the best team despite the rankings. But I'm, I'm expecting a great game in that last one. Uh, should wrap up a fantastic day of basketball we've seen here. Uh, this is our going to be our third closest or our third close game and then potentially we can have that fourth close game. So I don't know last time that we've seen four really, really close games like this all in one day, but it's certainly been a great day for basketball. We've had two really good days of basketball here at the Family Arena in St. Charles, Missouri. The women had four really good games. The nightcap last night was Lewis, went to overtime, they beat you, Indy, and really two solid matchups in the women tomorrow kick things off at 12 noon. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, it's going to be a good day of basketball all week. I mean, this is one of the arguably the most difficult conference to play in or the toughest conference to play in all in Division II for both women's and men's basketball. So you're always going to have a good tournament here, and it was the exact same way last year and certainly shaping up to be a good finish here tonight. Cameron Bundy with the basketball, six and a half to go in the second half. Covered by Inagwe. Inagwe, very long arms, very athletic player. He's done a nice job on Bundy, despite the fact that Bundy's put up 20 here tonight. Foster out top, Gammies. Cummings left side, Bundy, pump fake, double team comes at him. Palmer spots for three at the buzzer, no good. But getting a rebound down was Gammies. Luciano Gammies with the rebound from Lancaster, California. Senior guard, 6'3", Gammies drives the lane, finger roll, layup off the glass, and it's good. Gammies has played some great basketball here in this second half, both on the offensive and defensive end. There he is again, slicing his way to the hoop to get the easy lay-in. And Nagwe spots for three, and he drains one from beyond the NBA arc. Anagwe, just a 30% shooter from three. He started the year really cold and then found his shot there in the middle of the season. I know earlier this season, he lit up USI for seven made threes in a single game. Gammy is now Foster. Foster looking for Bundy on the right side. Bundy, shoulder down, drives the lane. He gets fouled. This one's probably going to go against Hermson or the second. That'll be his second personal if it indeed, indeed it does Hermson go against him. three-point shooting here for the contest. It was hot in the first half. Jury shot 50%, eight of 16, but for the game right now, they're 48%, 12 of 25. That first half, Jury was, uh, Quincy was 50% uh, in that first half, 12 of 25, 48%. But in the, in the first, second half for Jury, six of 11, just two of six this half, eight of 17, 47% really tremendous numbers despite what they're shooting. Yeah, absolutely. I think it was, I mean, a lot of it was weighted first half. Obviously, both these teams were shooting high percentages in the first half, obviously cooled down a little bit from the arc, but it's going to come down to who is going to be able to find their open shots and knock them down when they get the opportunities. Bundy makes both foul shots. It's back to a one-point game. Quincy leads. Both teams played eight players here tonight. War of attrition 
because Sinor, as Sinor drives the lane, it's blocked out of bounds. It'll be Quincy basketball. Ben scoring, Quincy leads that with that in that category, 28 to 13. Yeah, the Quincy's bench has really stepped up tonight, uh, especially the likes of Desjardins and also Frasco, who stepped up, both have 12 points. And Nagwe for three, and he got it! Godson and Nagwe is one of those players, once he heats up, he can really get it going. He doesn't shoot the greatest percentage from behind the arc, but when he's seeing the, the bucket like that, anything can happen for Godson and Nagwe. When you talk about the bench points, if you go back, it's 13 points for Drury. How about 11 of them have come from uh, Jamal, uh, Cummings. Cummings, Jamal Cummings. He's been fantastic on the bench, although he's been more quiet in the second half, all 11 of those points coming in that first half. That last foul also went on Gonson Nagwe. That's his fourth personal. As we talked about already, Gonson Nagwe really heating up here late. Be interesting to see if he stays in the game. He's, his defense is really kind of frustrated. Cameron Bundy just six of 14 from the field, two of eight behind the arc for Cameron Bundy. Bundy will go back to the foul line for the Panthers. He's eight of nine going into this shot. First one is up and good. You gotta give credit to Cameron Bundy because he's found a way to get to the charity stripe when his shot's not been falling tonight. And that's just what a senior guard will do, especially someone as prolific as him on the offensive end. And Nagwe and Tagarelli go to the bench for the Hawks. Checking into the lineup for them is Frasco and Magahe. Bundy makes both foul shots. He leads all scorers now with 24. Quincy from behind the arc. This is an uncharted territory for them. They've shot multiple times this season, over 15 threes in a game. They're quickly approaching that. They have 13. They're 13 of 26 on the night. Yeah, I mean, anytime you shoot 50% behind the arc, you're gonna have a good night. Eight of 16 in the first half, five of 10 here in the second half. And if they can continue to knock those shots down, it's gonna be tough for Jury to stay in this one and get the victory, especially when teams just shooting that hot. Under 10 on the shot clock, Herm Sonor inbounds it to Jardins. Washington left side, they look for Sonor. He spots for three, it's gonna be way off the mark. Gamis with the box out, picking it up is Joshua Palmer. Panthers trail by two, four minutes to go in the second half. You really had a good one here in the first game of the evening session. Game three of four of quarterfinal action for the men. Gamis. Palmer left side. Foster stops, takes a shot, misses. It, Sinor gets the rebound, pushes it up court. Washington spots for three. It's off the front of the iron. No good. Desjardins gets the rebound and gets it out top to Herm Sinor. They get a reset on the shot clock, under three and a half to go. Quincy leads this one by two. Ninth offensive rebound for the Hawks. A chance here to extend their lead even further. Washington out top. Herm Sinor to Jardins for three. It's off the iron, no good. But there's going to be a foul on Luciano Gamis, and he'll go to the line to shoot three. And just Jardins, 65% free throw shooter on the year. He'll have to wait until after the media break, though. He'll get a chance to think about this one before he takes it. Quincy leads 84 82 with 318 to go. You got all the action in a 2016 GLBC Men's Basketball Championships here on the. I'm Lauren. I'm proud to be a KU student. My time here has been some of the best days of my life. Let me show you how. that college is the best four years of your life. And my experience at QU thus far has been just that.
Nice crowd on hand here for the nighttime session to Drury Panther fans here. The Quincy Hawk fans here. We'll see a spattering of purple coming in for the Truman State Bulldogs here momentarily. Nate Desjardins will go to the foul line for Quincy. Desjardins on the season, 66%. He's gotten to the foul line less than 40 times this season. The Jardins makes the first of three. A bit of a small sample size. He can certainly shoot it from the outside. Going to be crucial here if he can knock down all three of these free throws. It'll extend Quincy's lead to a two-possession game. Second from Desjardins is good, and it's now a four-point lead. Third from Desjardins, he knocks all three of them down. It's a five-point lead for the Hawks of Quincy. Six players for the Hawks in double digits here tonight. Six of their eight players that have played have double digits. Drew Moore. Picks up the offensive foul. Well, offensive foul was on Cameron Bundy as I lose my breath as I'm choking on something. I'm not sure what <laughs> it is though. Free throw shooting for both teams here tonight. If you look at what Quincy's done, they're 11, 10 of 11, 91%. Drury on the other hand, 13, 18 of 23 for 78%, well above their averages for the season. Absolutely, and Drury getting the line, you know, early and often here tonight. 18 of 23, that's really been the difference as far as keeping them into this game. Uh, just like Quincy's had the difference on the three point line. Three ball from the Jardins is good! Might even got away with a foul there as this Jardins fell into the team bench as he knocked down that shot. Now five of seven behind the arc. Nate Desjardins averages eight points a game. He's got 18 tonight. That goes against this Jardins, so that's his fourth personal foul. So now we officially do have four fouls on him. Although we thought <laughs> earlier he already had four. He has certainly been a game changer for Quincy off the bench. 18 points, second on the team in scoring tonight. Cameron Pundy will go back to the foul line. He'll shoot two. First one is up and good. He's now 11 of 12. He, you know, we talk about how good of a, a basketball player Cameron Bundy is. He's a guy who goes to the foul line nearly 10 times a night. Oh, absolutely, and it's because he's got that senior guard mentality. He knows what he needs to do in certain spots. If his shot's not falling, he focuses on getting to the cup and trying to force the issue and get himself some easy looks from the foul line. Bendy drops both of his foul shots. He now has 26 as the Panthers trail by six with 237. Foster gets a steal. Foster. Lays one up and in, and he's fouled. Great job from Foster to get in transition after the steal, finish through the contact for the A1. Drury all of a sudden building on their momentum. Foul is going to be on Hearn Sinor. Got to look at the replay in the steal near the midcourt. A strip Sinor. Foster will come back the other way and lay one up and in. He didn't Foster's waste any foul time shot at all. is going to roll off the iron and drop, and we have a three-point game with 2.30 to go. Tagarelli, Nagahe, out top to Inagwe, Sinor, down low, Tagarelli lays one up and in. Just a defensive mistake there. I don't know what happened, but somebody got lost in defensive communication, leaving Tagarelli wide open under the bucket. Foster. Panthers trail by five with two minutes to go. Bundy spots for three for good! Oh my! Down court, Inagwe. Inagwe is gonna get fouled by Gammies. A lot of contact there all the way through the catch and the dribble as well. Good job for Inagwe to go up high point that ball like receiver and then draw the foul. Anagwe will go to the foul line for the Hawks. Let's send it over to Reed Bensinger. Update on the potential injury report on Godson Anagwe. He appears to uh, have put all the doubt away that he's injured. He has 19 points, and now he's at the line for the Hawks. So as far as Drury goes, Bundy, Cameron Bundy, has caught fire and got off to a scintillating start in the second half and now has 27 points. Uh, look for both teams to go to their star players down the stretch. 
Back to you guys. Thank you, Reed. Dodson and Agwe misses the first of two foul shots. Second one from Anagwe. Pinballs in and out, no good. The Panthers can either tie or take the lead in this possession, and there's going to be a timeout taken by Steve Hesser. Timeout, Panthers. It'll be a 30-second timeout. We'll stay here. So in your first game tomorrow night, it'll be Bellarmine taking on Lewis, the five seed. And the winner of this one will take on the winner of UW Parkside, Truman State in the nightcap. Myself and Jordan Fisher will have the call. Jordan will do the play-by-play. -play. We'll just we'll just switch head. We won't <laughs> even switch headsets. You can just sit there. I'll sit here, and we'll just kind of go. It in sounds the great to me. We don't actually have to even physically switch positions. We'll just switch roles. But this game right now we have in front of us certainly shaving up to be a good finisher. Both teams could break the 100-point mark as we are nearing the final two minutes of this game underneath now. I look for both teams to continue to go to their star players for Drury. That's going to be Cameron Bundy, 29 points. He's really leading the way. And then I look for probably Gonson and Agwe, and then maybe even a little bit of Joseph Tagger Rally for Quincy down the stretch. Try to go to your senior leaders and try to get the easy buckets here. I'll be curious to see if Bundy will take the ball out of Nagwe, who has four fouls. Switch Tagarelli now on Bundy. They swing it around the top of the arc. Foster around the screen. Foster takes the Jardins baseline. Back out to Drew Moore. Bundy with the basketball. Five on the shot clock. Bundy dribble drive penetration has it stripped from behind. It goes out of bounds. It'll be Drury basketball with two seconds on the shot clock. Good defense there from Quincy. I think it was Tag really got to handle that one, knocking it out of bounds. Bundy taking this one out from the from the baseline. Interesting decision here since he's one of your better shot makers. With only two seconds left on the shot clock. Have to do something, gets it out top, shoots it at the buzzer off the iron, no good, and Agwe gets the rebound. That shot was taken by Douglas Moore. That was the only option they had on the inbound. Marty Bell says, hey, settle it down. We got a two point lead and 70 seconds to go on the clock. Let's milk this for what it's all it's worth. Tagarelli gets away with the walk. Jumper from the foul line is no good. And Magahe picks up a foul underneath. And that's going to send Jury to the foul line for two free throws. It's now they're over the foul. They've already been over the foul limit. That's huge in a two-point game. Could be a game changer here with just under a minute left to play. Magahe picks up his third foul. Number 24, Douglas Moore. Douglas Moore will go to the foul line. More on the season, 63%. He's 19 of 30. Moore's first. Good. He's now 3 of 5 from the charity stripe tonight. He has now 11 points off the bench for Jury. Or, excuse me, he's actually 4 for 4 for 4 points. I read the wrong Moore stat line there. Moore second, and we're tied. Both teams with one timeout. Both teams with one timeout left. Tie number seven of the night. We've had 17 lead changes here on the night. And Nagwe out top, covered by Gamis. And there's gonna be a foul on Gamis. And Nagwe got, a, got away with the push off. Yeah, he did. We've seen Nagwe get away with that a couple times tonight. He's just trying to create separation. Now Nagwe. Heading to the foul line, just a 58% free throw shooter on the year. Luciano Gamis picks up his third foul. Godson and Nagwe will go to the foul line. He'll shoot two. First one pinballs in and out. It's no good. 42.7 seconds to go. We're tied at 92 between the Panthers of Drury and the Hawks of Quincy here in first the game three of the quarterfinals of the night here from the Family Arena in St. Charles, Missouri. Anagwe's next foul shot. Too strong, he misses Bundy with the basketball. 0 for 4 from the foul line is Anagwe in his last two, his last four shots. 12 second difference between the shot clock and Dame clock. Bundy in the corner, Bundy will bring it back out top. Bundy spots for three, off the front of the iron, no good, Drew Moore with the rebound, layup, no good. Moore slaps it out of bounds. It'll be Quincy basketball. 
huge here. Quincy going to have an opportunity for the final shot if they choose to do so, and I would I would think that they would here. Tournament atmosphere on a neutral court. You're trying to knock off the second-seeded Jury Panthers. Both these teams have done battle pretty well over the last couple of years. Uh, very close contest. I know last time, January 2015, actually, both these teams went to overtime. Cameron Bundy, of course, bearing a deep three-pointer to win that game. Quincy looking to get revenge from there. Sonor to Desjardins. Marty Bell lets him play with seven on the game clock. Could Quincy get the monkey off their back and beat Drury for the first time in a few years? And Nockway for three in the win, and no, it's no good, and we're going to overtime. Back-to-back -back overtimes here in the quarterfinals. We'll step aside. We're tied at 92. You got all of the action at the 2016 GLVC Men's Basketball Championships here on the GLVC Sports Network, where champions are crowned. John Edwards, Jordan Fisher from Southern Indiana here joining us. Reed Benzinger from Quincy behind the benches for us, and we're going to head to overtime for the second consecutive game here today. Jordan, we go to this overtime. One of the things that we were just talking about is foul trouble. Give us an update on foul trouble for both sides as we go into this OT. Well, absolutely. Fouls could certainly play a big part of this. Quincy, four players with four personal fouls. Godson Nagwe, Vaughn Washington, Nate Desjardins and then Jordan Wilson, all with four. Only one player with four personal fouls for Drury, and that's Drew Moore, who has 10 points. Pair of players, Luciano Gamis and Cameron Bundy, both playing with three fouls, as well as Douglas Moore with three fouls for Drury. Drury wins the tip. Gamis will give it back to Cameron Bundy. Behind the Drury bench is the Drury women's basketball team, who will play here tomorrow afternoon. One of the biggest cheerleaders behind the bench is the women's coach, Molly Miller. Losing the ball and getting it stripped <coughs> is Quincy. Desjardins spots for three. It's good! Huge shot from Desjardins. He was in transition. Pass was actually a poor pass. Desjardins adjusted to it, caught it, and then spotted up in the corner to knock down the three. Six of eight from behind the arc for Nate Desjardins. Drury head coach Steve Hessler, as you get a look at him on the screen, who was just warned by the officials on the floor. No more talking, we've heard enough. Tevin Foster with the basketball, gets it over to Cameron Bundy. Finger roll, layup is good! What a beautiful move from Cameron Bundy. Now 31 points for the senior guard. Desjardins down low, Tagarelli fall away, jumper off the iron, no good. Magahi with the rebound, shot up is no good. Drew Moore with the rebound. Under four minutes to go, Quincy leads by one, 95-94. Out top, Tevin Foster. Drew Moore right side. Foster to Bundy. Finds Moore on the baseline. Moore spins, drives. Jumper no good, Magahi with the rebound. Herm Sinor will bring the ball up over midcourt. We'll try to settle ourselves down for a moment. Both these teams, I'm sure, are tired. They've been running up and down the floor all night. Now in this overtime period, going to come down to, to who has the better conditioning. Tagarelli underneath is going to get fouled by Tevin Foster. That'll be Foster's second foul. Tagarelli will go to the foul line. Tagarelli on the night, 15 points. He's one of two from the stripe. He came in 
shooting 73% on the season. This game very well could come to, down to foul shots. 10 of 15 from the line for Quincy, now 11 of 16. Jury 23 of 28, both teams over the 10 foul limit, so both teams will have two shots the rest of the way. Joshua Palmer comes into the game for Douglas Moore. Second one from Tagarelli, pinballs in and out, no good. Rebounded by Joshua Palmer. Panthers trail by two, 96-94. Gammy's out top. Foster now left side, it goes back to Palmer. Gammy's back out top once again. Gammy's. Palmer now drives the lane, travels. Unforced turnovers, that's gonna hurt you, especially in the overtime period. Down by two points, got to really focus on taking care of the basketball, not just giving away opportunities. 17th turnover of the night for the Panthers. Just 11 turnovers for Quincy. They've played near perfect basketball all night long. Absolutely, just four turnovers this entire second half and overtime combined for Quincy. Sonor, Magahe, back to Sonor. Sonor's jumper right side. Off the iron, no good. Drew Moore gets his hands on the rebound. Gammies with the ball, gives it over to Cameron Bundy. Panthers look to tie it once again. Bundy drives into the middle, stops, pops, off the iron, no good. And Nagwe with the rebound. One and done has it been for the last couple of possessions, and there's going to be a timeout taken by Marty Bell. Let's go over to Reed Benzinger behind the benches. He's got a piece for us. As we continue on here, uh, both teams continue to shoot hot from the three-point line, especially Nate Desjardins for Quincy University as he's six for eight, has one in the overtime as well. And Tevin Foster for Jury Panthers, uh, five of seven from three. Both teams up around 50% shooting from three. It might come down to whoever has the ball left. Also, Drury has not been in an overtime game this, yet this season where Quincy is one and one. Back to you guys. Thank you, Reed. Good piece on the overtime. As you know, these teams, you would think during the course of the year they might see an overtime or two, but really limited in the overtimes during the course of the season. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Quincy, as he just touched on, 1-1 one one this year in overtime. Obviously, one of those losses against Wisconsin Parks that we talked about in the pregame, 108-107. Jury, their first overtime game of the year. Certainly a big moment to have an overtime game. You're going to find out a lot about your team in this next 2 minutes and 17 seconds as far as who wants to go home and who wants to stay? And I'm sure someone like Cameron Bundy, senior guard, does not want to go out with a loss here in the quarterfinals. I'd look for Cameron Bundy to really try to take this game over with here in these final two, two minutes, as even though he has 31 points, he's kind of struggled from the field, just eight of 18. Bundy on the night, 31. Nate Desjardins, who came off the bench, has scored 21. Bench scoring has been huge for Quincy tonight. They got 37 points off their bench to just 15 for Drury. 11 of the Drury points came from Cummings. He had 11 in the first half, and he hasn't touched the ball much, if any, in the second half. Absolutely, and he kind of, as uh, Reed kind of touched on, Bundy and Foster combining for 54 points right now, over half the team points for Drury. Desjardins gets it back to Sinor. 20 on the shot clock, 2.10 to go in this overtime. Desjardins right corner. Down low, they go to Tagarelli. Layup, good. Great high-low work from Quincy out of the timeout. Four-point lead now for the Hawks. Got to defend here for these final two minutes. Gammies into the corner. They go to Douglas Moore. Back out top, Gammies to Bundy. Bundy for three. It's good! Cameron Bundy time. Last two minutes overtime. Look for him to knock down every shot that he gets because he's going to be locked in for these final couple minutes. 100 seconds to go in the overtime. Desjardins with the basketball out top. Corner, Sinor. Down low to go to Tagarelli. He turns on Drew Moore. It's up and good. Good defense from Drew Moore. Better offense from Tagarelli. Tagarelli quiet tonight, but he does have 16 points. Out top, Foster near side, Gammies. Bundy with the basketball to be 10 on the shot. 70 seconds to go. Bundy around the screen, spots off the iron, no good. Rebounded Vaughn Washington.
There's going to be a foul on the floor. We'll go down to the other end to shoot foul shots. Going to come down to foul shots here, as we already talked about. Quincy, 11 of 17 for 64%. Jury, 23 of 28, although they have yet to get to the free throw line here in this overtime period. Quincy making their second trip there. Drew Moore, the local product out of St. Charles, Missouri, to 6'4 sophomore, has just fouled out of the game for the Panthers. Vaughn Washington will go to the foul line. He'll shoot two. Washington on the season, 79%. He knocks down the first one. Four-point game, less than a minute left to play here. Vaughn Washington knocked this down. Might just put it just too far out of reach for the Panthers, although the Panthers also have Cameron Bundy, so anything could still happen. Washington knocks down both foul shots. It's a five-point lead for the Hawks. Foster drives the lane, and there's going to be a foul on the floor. The foul is going to be on Nate Desjardins, and Desjardins has just fouled out. And that's huge. Desjardins, 21 points off the bench, 6 of 8 from behind the arc. All of a sudden, you lose a shooter and someone that's been a spark plug for the Hawks tonight ever since he's come on the floor. And when he's been on the floor, it seems like the Hawks have been a different team. So he'll be heading to the bench for the rest of this game. Nate Desjardins has played in 29 games this season. He averages 22 minutes a game. He shoots 43% from the floor. He averages 8 points a game tonight. He leaves with 21 points. He was 6 of 9 from the floor, 6 of 8 from three-point territory, and made three foul shots as Foster knocks down the first of three. Really, Des Jarvis was a huge part of that bench to scrap sheet too. 37 points for Quincy off the bench, just 15 points from the jury bench. It's kind of the difference here tonight. Sonor brings the ball up over midcourt with a three-point lead under a minute to go in the overtime. Two timeouts for Drury, and there's going to be a foul on Cameron Bundy. Sonor just a 69% free throw shooter, so not a bad foul there, although that is going to be Cameron Bundy's fourth personal foul, so we'll have to be careful the rest of the way. You do not want to lose Cameron Bundy to foul trouble here tonight. Sonor will go to the foul line. He'll shoot two. They have a three-point lead. 45.9 to go in the overtime. First foul shot is up and good. Just the third point tonight for Sonor. He's one of 10 from the floor. He's really had a rough go tonight from the floor, especially 0 for 6 from behind the three point line. Second from Sonor, he drains both of them. Five point lead. Bundy drives. Bundy has the shot partially blocked. Sonor picks up the basketball. Sonor will get fouled by Joshua Palmer. Herm Sonor will go back to the foul line. He's got three points on the night. First of two is good. Sonor now with four points. Correction, it'll be five points. Six point lead, he makes it seven and now becomes a three possession game with 35 seconds to go. Could the Hawks of Quincy get the monkey off their back and snap the seven game losing streak? Bundy for three off the back of the iron, no good. Palmer and the ball gets reached in and Steve Hesser's looking for the foul and he's not gonna get it. It'll be a held ball situation and the possession arrow favors the Hawks of Quincy. And that might just about do it if the Hawks get the inbound and knock down a free throw or two that could Put it out of the uh, too far distance as looks like the Hawks might pull off the upset here in the 7-2 matchup. Vaughn Washington brings the ball up over midcourt. A foul will go to Tevin Foster. Marty Bell says no one out, out near the foul line. Let's just back out. Vaughn Washington, one of the top free throw shooters on this team at 78%, just below 79. As I think you want him at the foul line, the red shirt junior from Kalamazoo. Chance to put this one away for the Hawks. First one from Washington rolls around and it goes in. 
An eight point lead for the Hawks of Quincy. And this will probably be one of the biggest wins in Quincy Hawk history over the recent number of years. Second one from Washington is no good, but it's an eight point lead with 20 to go. Foster spots for three, it's off the iron, no good. Tagarelli with the rebound, Vaughn Washington with the basketball, and Herb Sinor will just hold it out for the final 10 seconds, and the Quincy Hawks will make it to the semifinals tomorrow. They'll take on the winner of Wisconsin Parkside and Truman State. What a win for the Quincy Hawks, knocking off the second seeded Jury Panthers, led by Cameron Bundy, who had a fantastic night, 34 points. Foster also 25 points, but Quincy weathered the storm and won this one in overtime. St. Charles City Ordinance will give his fans a skip efforts for climbing over the dashboards before. We'll step aside. Head coach Marty Bell will join us. You get all the action in the 2016 GLVC Men's Basketball Championships here on the GLVC Sports Network, where champions are crowned. Four, eight, four.